Welcome to a brief introduction to Visual KPI from Transpara. I'll start with a quick overview of the basic functionality. First thing Visual KPI does is it reads data in real time from many data sources, many more than you see on the list here. And those can include things like existing data sources in your company, uh, like your ERP system or relational databases or time series databases. It can also include real-time control systems, manually entered data, Excel spreadsheets, and even third-party data like weather, fire, market pricing, or even supply chain information. The important part about this is that we're reading that data. We're not moving it into a new big system that you have to manage and maintain, nor is it a system that's going to take months and months to build and create. It's a very lightweight layer that sits on top of your data sources, lets you leave the data where it makes the most sense for you, and makes use of it. The second thing we do is add context to that information. Things that put that information to use and make it obvious to users. Things like what makes it high or low or good or bad, like targets and limits. Where in the world is it located? Who is responsible for it? What groups is it a member of? Um, should it be alerted on? Plus the ability to add custom information, things that are specific to your company or your industry. Um, and all of this is useful because it's the context that makes the system visual and organizes the information. And Visual KPI is a web application. It runs inside the web browser on any device, so there's no apps to download and install and maintain. It also um, handles the differences in all these screen sizes automatically. So if you're looking at it on a small phone or a tablet or a PC or a large screen, even in a control room or an operations center or even the boardroom, the system automatically scales itself to the right size. Once you have a fully running Visual KPI system, you can take it further by personalizing it, making custom dashboards for individual roles or individual users, and even their own watch lists of favorite KPIs that highlight when those are in alert or not. And it's also highly secure. We come from a world of working in nuclear power and mo monitoring the electrical grids and monitoring oil refineries where security is paramount. But security can also be used here to give individual users or individual roles access to only the data that matters to them. So we have something called object level security, which means every individual component of our software could be secured separately. So if I log into the same system that you do and you have more rights than I do, you'll see more information, even though it may be organized the same, even though we're looking at the exact same site. Lastly is alerts. And alerts are critical because our system is usually de designed not for an analyst who sits in front of data all day, but for people who have another job to do, like operations or maintenance or even executives. Um, and so alerts need to be there because our software needs to be smart enough to tell users when they should pay attention and what they should pay attention to, rather than forcing them to look at the system and sift through information and find out. So that's the quick summary. And the key elements here that make it different are the focus on KPIs and on color and on visualization, the real-time aspect of it in that the system is always updating in front of you, and the automatic roll-up and organization of your information so that even on a small screen and even with many, many things to look at, you have an instant view of where you should look based on the severity of your problems. Now let's take a look at the user experience in Visual KPI so you can get a feel for what's on the screen. First we'll start with the navigation bar in the upper left. It's a very consumer friendly type uh, look and feel here with large buttons that are easy for a touch screen and navigation that gets out of the way when it's not in use. Second thing you'll see is the timestamp here in the in the top. And the entire application here is alive, so as the data in your data sources changes, the screen will automatically update without you ever having to refresh or go get more data. In the upper right, you'll see this number four in, the, in orange, and that is the personalized watch list. So an individual user could add their favorite or the key KPIs that matter most to them, and the number here shows how many of those KPIs are currently in an alertable state. Number four you'll see is that the application was designed first for mobile 
and then grew up to larger screens. So all of our visualizations are meant for small screens. They look good even when you're looking at a very large amount of data. You still have the ability to roll that up and know instantly where your problems are even on a very small screen. We also have a lot of different visualizations. Um, I won't go through the entire list here, but some of the key ones are this ability to roll up and group information into percentage roll-ups or trends or bullet charts or just a very long list and all designed for mobile or the large screen. When you get down to the lowest level, you can trend any KPI and these are real-time trends. You can also do that of a single KPI, many KPIs at the same time, uh, a single value at multiple points in time to compare them, and you have features like cursors and multi-scale and downsampling and support for predictive analytics and future data. We have a very powerful GeoMaps feature, which is a way to add geolocation to anything that you might track. That can be a fixed object or many, or could be moving objects like trucks and trains and ships that automatically move around the map. And any object in our system can have geolocation attached with it. It's very fast to set up. And once that exists, you can also use the GPS on your phone to sort your information right inside a visual KPI by how far it is from where you're standing currently. All of these visualizations, again, they're real time and our goal is to make them all very obvious. So in this particular example, I'm looking at a list of KPIs here and how they compare right now to their targets and limits. Um, and you'll see all the visualizations have this obviousness about them. The cascading and the roll-ups we talked about earlier, here's an example of a percentage roll-up. And in these groups of KPIs here, they may contain just two or 10 KPIs, or they could contain thousands. But even on a small screen, you can instantly see where your problems lie and drill in further. And lastly, we're looking at a personalized dashboard on this tablet screen here. That means someone has gone through and picked their favorite visualizations and their favorite subsets of the data that's been made available to them and put it on the screen and organized it the way they wanted to in a drag and drop fashion, very quick, very easy to set up. And then it adjusts to any screen size. So that dashboard could look great on a big screen or even down on the mobile screen. Now let's take a look at a few examples running against real data. And I'm here on a tablet in this case and looking at a mine example. I happen to be on a profile called the superintendent here and I'm going to switch that. So I have a very simple dashboard for the superintendent, very clear where the issues are. Let's go and change that from the superintendent to, let's go choose the maintenance manager. And looking at the way they've configured the dashboard here, I not only have also a very simple look at it, but I have a geo map as well with some objects on it that are moving. Um, and let's see what it looks like to drill into an application. So I'm going to leave the dashboard and go to groups. And I'm going to click in and show you how to cascade. So again, here at the very top level, I'm looking at, oh, 319 KPIs in this case. This first group has 20 of them. And by clicking in here by name and drilling in, I'm essentially just drilling down the value driver tree for this mine. Things like truck capacity and fill factor. And once I get down to the lowest level, I actually see that KPI to, and find that actual issue. And I can click further to trend or I could go back up to a different level and choose different visualizations. The next example I'm looking at here is an executive view at a telecommunications company where I have things like an overview of all their divisions and some key KPIs that may matter to this executive and some of their subgroups even called out. Then I can just switch over to groups to see the top of their hierarchy and then I could click in to see more details. Like I could go into operations today and let's look at performance as an example and growth and get right down here and see where they're having a little bit of trouble here in a couple of areas. I could go right in and trend that information. I could see some detail or drag it around or even zoom right in on that live trend and see it update in real time if I want. This next example is a power generation company. And I'll do this one on the mobile phone so you can see what it looks like on a smaller screen. In this case, I'm going to look in and look at their groups and drill through their hierarchy. In this case, you can see 
immediately at the very top level across their regions they can see they have problems in region northeast and rather than click in by name here I'm going to click right on the bar and get a KPI map view and this is a view that shows me all the KPIs in this case organized by site I can open those up and compare them look at the trends see how they look compared to each other close them back down and I want to use this one as an example to show lightweight analytics on this device or on this site so in this case, I'm uh, depending on my role, I'm still looking at a lot of information, maybe more than I want to, and in a way that's different than uh, whatever I'm trying to accomplish. So the first thing I might do is filter this information out by getting rid of things that are good or not in service intentionally. If I apply that, see I've reduced the information down to a more manageable level, and I'm only looking at problems now. But the second thing that I might want to do is group this differently. And I could group it by status or by the groups that it's already done by default. But most importantly, we have this thing called custom attributes. This allows you to decorate your information with things that are specific to your company or your industry. In this case, I can do things like sort it by interconnects or units. I'll do that. I'll do a unit type here. And then if I apply that information, you'll see I just sorted this list in a couple of clicks by where are my bigger problems in coal versus gas. And in this case, I have more problems going on in coal. That may uh, affect my decision. Or you can see I have my most severe problems actually in gas. And I could look here at fuel costs as an example, trend that information immediately. And I can see over a week I have a problem. This is actually an SPC chart here. And I could even change the time range on this to a much shorter. Let's look at it over just a day or an individual shift and see what it looks like there. And I can see exactly where it's trending. I can drill in, I can zoom with my finger, get as much detail as I want, or stay at the very high level and see where my issues are. The last example here is a power transmission and distribution example. And I'm looking at the dashboard on a tablet again. And in this case, they're using the GeoMap view. And you'll see I have a lot of information, various things, um, depending on my role. And in this case, I'm a maintenance manager again. But on the GeoMap, it's a very obvious to me that I have problems in one particular geographic area at this Palomar station. And if I click into the GeoMap there and change it to satellite, I can see exactly where this problem is. And this is my plant site. I can zoom in. I can move this around. I can even open these, see their trend, close them back down. But I also want to take this chance to show you a few of the other visualizations. So I'm looking at three KPIs here in the GeoMap view. I could also look at these as a KPI map. I could look at them in the bullet chart view, which focuses on, in on how they're performing right now compared to their targets and limits. Or I could just go to a list view and look primarily at how they're performing over time. I can even do things as simple and quick as trend them against each other quickly. And now I've just made a trend of these three for over a one day period. I could change the time range of that to maybe a four hour trend, see what that looks like. Let's say I like that, and now I'll just add that to my dashboard. By clicking in the upper right and saying add to dashboard, I've just added this object. And if I configure my dashboard, you'll see the drag and drop dashboard designer. And if I go all the way down to the bottom of the screen here, you'll see that new trend that I made. And if I grab the corner of it and resize it, move it around a little bit, maybe make it a little taller. And I'm going to put it right up at the top where I was, uh, right up where that geo map was. Just because it's suddenly become an important trend to me, I want to see it at the very top. If I click Save, now you'll see my dashboard has been reorganized to show that trend. So that's how easy it is to make changes. And again, all the information I'm looking at here is live, um, and it will all change as the information in your data sources change. So that's a quick overview of Visual KPI. And if you need to see a more detailed demo, we'd be happy to arrange it. Thank you.